Hey guys, today we're gonna to talk about the Hyundai i30 kit install, what's included in the kit, um, and how to actually go about installing it into the vehicle yourself. Um, so first of all, what I'm gonna go over is what's included in the kit. So when you purchase the kit, it comes with uh, the Motec M142 ECU, it comes with a mounting bracket to install it into the car, also has the patch loom, which basically joins the Motec ECU connection to the factory ECU header. It comes with a Bosch LSU 4.9 wideband sensor uh, and Motec dual half bridge and LTC, which we've already mounted on a bracket. All mounting hardware is included in this kit. So that includes all screws, bolts, nuts, everything that you need um, to install it into the car. And absolutely nothing is required for you to supply yourself. Okay, so what we're now gonna do is just show you the installation procedure in an actual car so that you can see for yourself how you're actually going to do this at home. Okay, so the first step after we've opened the bonnet of the car is to remove the engine cover. Now, in order to remove the engine cover, you just need to place one hand on each side of the cover and pull upwards firmly. Now that we've removed the engine cover, we've exposed a couple of components that I would just like to point out to you. Now, we have the factory O2 sensor or wideband sensor in the dump pipe behind the turbocharger. It's connected here to the factory loom. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this sensor and replace it with the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. On top of that, you have your factory ECU over here behind the battery. So in order to get to this, we're going to remove the battery and install the Motec in the factory ECU's location. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna remove the negative post from the battery terminal. Then we'll move on to the positive terminal as well and we'll remove that. To remove those battery posts, it's a 10 mil socket. Then we need to change over to a 12 mil to remove the battery bracket from down the bottom here. Lift the handle on the battery, pull firmly upwards, place the battery somewhere out of the way. Okay, so now that we've removed the battery, We've now exposed the factory ECU and you can see that there's a bracket that's held on by two, three 10 mil bolts. We're gonna remove those bolts now and we're going to remove the factory ECU. So the first step to doing this is it will remove the connections from the top of the ECU by pushing in the locking pin and then lifting the, the tab on the side of the connector. Then lifting firmly directly upwards. Okay, now that the three bolts have been removed from the factory ECU bracket, the factory ECU will simply just lift out of its current location. So now that we have the ECU out of the car, you can see that it's held onto the bracket by four nuts on each corner of the ECU. We'll remove these nuts because we will reuse this back bracket to install the Motec ECU back into the car. Okay, so the first step is to mount the Motec M142 ECU to the bracket that's supplied in the kit using the Phillips head bolts and the eight mil nuts. Once this is done, we'll take the factory mounting bracket from the factory ECU. We'll locate the Motec over the top and then we will affix two of the 10 mil nuts to the left-hand side of the ECU bracket, leaving the right-hand side two off currently. So the next step is to take the supplied loom and plug it into the Motec ECU. Now these super seal connectors all have individual locating keying, so that means that you cannot install the wrong plug into the wrong plug hole. Once that's done, we'll take the fuse and mount it on the top pin and the relay and mount it on the bottom pin like so. Then we take the remaining two 10 mil nuts and install them onto the bracket. So now that that's complete, we'll now take the loom, the Motec ECU and the factory mounting brackets over to the car and then we'll install them into the factory mounting location. Okay, so we now position the mounting bracket the same as the factory ECU, lining up the bottom two tabs with the nuts that are on the back of the battery tray. Grab the three 10 mil bolts and install them back into the locations that they came from on the bottom mounting tabs of the bracket.
The next step is to take the Motec LTC and dual half bridge and mount them to the supplied bracket using the supplied mounting hardware. Following this, we then take this new bracket and we mount it to the firewall utilising these two existing studs. The purpose of the Motec dual half bridge is to drive the electronic eCVVT inlet camshaft. Now on this car, this is quite unique as most other vehicles that have variable camshaft use an oil pressure actuated camshaft gear. In this car, it actually uses a servo motor to control the position of the inlet camshaft at any point during the engine's operation. The next step is to take the connectors that are on the, on the supplied loom and connect them to the Motec dual half bridge and LTC. Now these connectors are all different so that you cannot connect them incorrectly and they're all labeled for LTC in, dual half bridge in, dual half bridge out. Following this, we need to take the factory ECU connectors and we connect them to our factory ECU header that is on the loom supplied. This is done by pulling the levers downwards until they click. Whilst the battery's out, also take the positive ring terminal, feed it up through the bottom of the plastic shroud, like so, and just place it on top of the battery terminal for now. We'll install this once the battery's back in place. Now take the battery, install it back into its factory location, Take the battery terminals and place them back onto the battery, including the additional battery positive and battery negative terminals that are supplied as part of the loom. Care should also be taken to ensure that nothing shorts out during this process, as you can damage the ECU or any other electronic hardware on the car. After the battery terminals are reinstalled, we can now place the battery bracket back at the base of the battery and affix using the 12 mil bolt. Now we've completed everything on the passenger side of the vehicle, we'll move over to the driver's side now and replace the factory O2 sensor with the supplied Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor. In order to do this, you'll need a 22 mil open-ended spanner. We'll remove the factory ECU connector from its bracket, push the clip in, and then the remove the sensor wiring mount from the rocker cover as well. So now we will reinstall the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor into the factory location using the factory installed bung in the dump pipe. The next step is to take the Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor and route its wiring over to the Motec LTC mounted on the firewall. First of all, we'll remove the coil connectors by lifting the gray locking tab and then pushing down on the connector and pulling back firmly. Now that the coil wiring's out of the way, we can take the Bosch LSU sensor wiring, route it through the valley, over to the Motec LTC sensor on the firewall. Now we can reconnect the coil plugs and push back in the grey locking tab. The final step of the installation is to take the Bosch LSU plug and connect it to the Motec LTC. You may like to zip tie some of the cables out of the way, but this is entirely up to you. Now we can reinstall the engine cover and route the ethernet cable from the Motec through to the passenger window for any calibrations and adjustments that need to be made. When this cable is not being used, you may like to coil it up and place it beside the factory fuse box in the engine bay. Most of the time this cable isn't needed 
unless your tuner or yourself need to download logs out of the ECU or make adjustments to the ECU tune. Now that the kit's installed, we'll be able to jump in the car, power it up, foot on the clutch, and start the car as per normal. What you'll notice is that there's no lights on the dash. This is because the Motec ECU communicates with all of the factory modules and every system within the car works as it does from factory. This ECU has a base map for a completely standard car. And as you can see, it runs as it did with the factory ECU in it.